output engines, these saddle jets are plugged because HO engines use a new system, which includes a component called a J-jet for each piston. The J-jet nozzle is bolted to the block and directs a stream of oil to the underside of the piston. HO pistons have a passageway to direct the flow of oil through the piston head to cool it. To prevent damage to the nozzle and loss of lubrication, the J-jet must be removed from the block before removing the piston. In fact, you need to take care any time you're servicing the lower end to avoid damaging the jet. There's one more item that you should be aware of in the area of engine lubrication, and that is that the oil pressure regulator now dumps to the pump instead of to the pan. The cooling system for the Cummins HPCR diesel engine uses Haute coolant. The interval for changing the factory fill coolant is five years or 100,000 miles, whichever comes first. Automatic transmission applications continue to use an oil to coolant transmission oil cooler. It has a new location near the starter motor. There's also an oil to air cooler in front of the radiator. The radiator cooling fan used with the Cummins HPCR engine is quite a bit different than the fan used with the previous engines. The fan still uses a viscous drive. Now, however, the drive is actuated electronically by the engine control module. The controller looks at inputs from coolant, air intake, and transmission temperature sensors and the AC status, and then sends a pulse width modulated signal to the solenoid in the fan drive. The solenoid controls the viscous fluid to match fan speed to vehicle operating conditions. There are a couple of items to be aware of when servicing the new fan or adjacent components. First, the fan blade and drive assembly is now right hand instead of left hand thread. Second, it is critical to route the fan wiring harness correctly. Failure to do so can cause the wiring to contact the fan and cause damage to a number of components. We'll talk more about the fan as one of the inputs to the new engine control module when we discuss the engine controls coming up next. Along with the changes to the engine and engine systems we've seen so far, there have also been a number of changes to the engine control system. Let's start with changes to the control modules. The Cummins HPCR engine continues to use an engine control module supplied by Cummins. However, this is a new module with a designation CM845. The new ECM handles almost all engine control functions, and all AC functions are now in the engine control module. On trucks with automatic transmissions, a JTEC controller handles transmission and cruise control functions. To accommodate additional inputs and outputs, the ECM now uses 50 and 60 pin connectors. To prevent damaging terminals, avoid back probing these connectors when performing diagnosis. We don't have the time in this program to discuss all of the inputs and outputs to the new controller. However, we can briefly describe some that have been added as a result of the engine's redesign. On the input side, the crank sensor, in combination with the cam sensor, now supplies the ECM with the engine speed signal. The fuel pressure sensor on the common rail is another new input as is a fan speed sensor. The AC request has also been added. And on manual transmission applications, the cruise control switches. These new inputs are used by the ECM to make decisions regarding the new outputs. These include the injector solenoids. Besides actuating the solenoids, the ECM also controls injector timing and duration. The ECM uses the fuel pressure sensor to control the electronic fuel control actuator in the high pressure pump. And the ECM uses feedback from the fan speed sensor to control the viscous fan drive. The engine control module uses several inputs in deciding when to engage the AC clutch. In addition to these outputs, the ECM now controls the generator field and on manual transmission models, the cruise control. As you might have guessed by now, all of the changes we've looked at so far have also brought along with them changes to diagnosis. And that's the subject of the next part of this program. It's always important to use up-to-date information for diagnosis and service. And this is particularly critical when you're working on new components or systems, such as the Cummins HPCR.
Service information for the new Cummins engine can be located in a number of places, depending on the system or components you're working on. Group 7 contains cooling system and accessory drive components. Group 8 covers the engine control module and JTEC controller. Group 9 has information about the engine assembly itself. The exhaust system and turbocharger are in Group 11, while Group 14 covers the fuel system. Some diagnostic information is available in these groups. However, the bulk of this information is located in the separate section for diagnostic procedures on the MDS-2 or in the printed Powertrain Diagnostic Procedures Manual. Additional resources are available in the form of training classes. Be sure to see the training tips section of this month's Tech News for further information. The tools used to diagnose the Cummins HPCR have also changed to accommodate the many new features of the engine. The DRB3 is now the only electronic tool used to diagnose the Cummins diesel engine. In the engine menu section under system tests, the injector kill test has been modified and the generator full field test has been moved from JTEC to ECM controlled items. There's also now a transfer pump test which actuates the pump. You no longer use actuators to do this. The trouble code selection remains much the same. However, you need to be aware that there are many new DTCs and that some P code designations have changed. Several new readouts have been added to the sensors and inputs outputs. Among them, several new fuel pressure readouts, and the fan speed in RPM, and the fan duty cycle in percent. Under monitors on the DRB3, you'll find a new selection, trip information, which is not related to the type of trip used with OBD2. Instead, you'll find a variety of items related to engine operating conditions. The trip information can be reset using an item under the miscellaneous selection on the DRB3. Also located under miscellaneous is a VIN rewrite function used when reprogramming or replacing engine control modules. The actuators on the DRB3 have undergone some changes which correspond to changes in engine components. For example, you can now actuate the fuel control solenoid in the high pressure pump. Earlier in the program, we looked at some of the new special tools used in servicing fuel system components, such as the injector connector tube remover tool, number 9015, and the injector remover, number 9010. There are a number of other new special tools associated with new diagnostic procedures for the Cummins HPCR engine. These include special tool number 9008, an injector wiring jumper harness, number 9011, a fuel line blocking tool, number 9012, a 12-millimeter test fitting, number 9013, a 14-millimeter test fitting, and number 9014, a different 12-millimeter test fitting. The use of the jumper harness is straightforward. It's installed on the wiring harness side of a pass-through connector. The tool allows you to check for signals to the two injectors each connector serves without having to back probe. It's important to pay close attention to how and where the rest of the fuel system tools are installed. It is possible to install the tools improperly and even to cause damage to components. To help you become familiar with these tools, let's look at how they're used as part of several fuel system tests. In the lift pump flow and inlet restriction test, the check for restrictions is made with the fuel pressure adapter 6631 and a vacuum gauge, while the flow check is made with a new special tool, number 9014. More specifically, the fuel pressure adapter is installed between the line from the fuel tank and the transfer pump inlet hose, and a vacuum gauge is attached to the fitting. For the flow part of the test, you need to remove the banjo connector bolt at the high 